Star Ocean, the second story R is doing something that I didn't think could be possible with the Star Ocean franchise, but it's now possible at this point. And I wanna talk all about it because there are some multiple bombshells that we have to go over in addition to just how awesome Star Ocean is. So think of this as part information and news on an incredible game in addition to the future in terms of what we can see and a review. So there's lots of different things here, but before we get into that, What's good everyone, OJ here. Welcome back to another video. Please make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you're someone new, and click that notification bell for the best Nintendo Switch JRPG news, live streams, and more. Now let's go ahead and jump into this because I saw the recent numbers for Star Ocean The Second Story R. And for those who don't know, Star Ocean is a long time franchise. It's been around for decades, not at this point, started all the way back on the Super Nintendo, but lately, especially since the HD era, so even more than lately, they've been having a rough time when it comes to sales, when it comes to the quality of the game, when it comes to the reviews. There's just been a lot of issues since the HD era, starting off with Star Star Ocean 4, then Star Ocean 5, which completely almost killed the franchise, Star Ocean 6, which is the Divine Force, which did just a bit better than the previous Star Ocean games reviews-wise and everything, but sales-wise, it just wasn't there. It was as low as $10. That's how much I picked up Star Ocean the Divine Force 4 on the PlayStation 5. $10. And the game just came out at the end of last year. That's definitely not what you want to see with your game. But guys, there is hope. The most recent Famitsu sales are here and it shows a very positive sign for this franchise. And we will get to my own personal impressions and pseudo review of Star Ocean. So make sure you just stick around for that because I will talk about that in just a bit because I've been playing a ton of it on the Nintendo Switch and PlayStation 5. So if we look at the most recent sales numbers for Star Ocean, the second story are it debuted at 50,577 sales, and I do know that it was one of the top eShop sellers as well in a few different regions. So that's definitely positive because if you go all the way back, or more like to last year, with Star Ocean, the Divine Force, that opened up lower than Star Ocean R. And remember, this is a brand new big 3D title, all of that, it opened up lower. It opened up at a combined 44,178 units. Now that includes the PlayStation 4 version of the game and the PlayStation 5 version of the game. Not at this point, obviously with the Nintendo Switch, a more popular system, you have a huge install base. The sales numbers did go up, but I think that the biggest thing to kind of combine this with is that not only were sales up, but the fact that it's a remake or a re-release that's selling better than a new title absolutely is good when it comes to the future of the franchise because what's that mean? Well, it gives you some clarity on what you can do or what you should do next. People, fans, whatever the case is, they want based off of these sales numbers starting off here, they love the old school or they want this old school style of Star Ocean. Square Enix put a lot of effort and time and money into this with Gem Drops, the developers of Star Ocean The Second Story are the remake. They put a lot of time into it. It was a much better remake than the original game. And I think that this type of game can give them some clarity onto what they should do next with the Star Ocean franchise. So should they still chase this 3D kind of weird looking anime look that just doesn't work, right? Just gets absolutely smoked by games like Xenoblade and Tales and Final Fantasy and everything else, Kingdom Hearts and all these other the games just review and sell way better than it or should they go in this route where they've had the best reviewed star ocean game in decades like literally the last time that we had a star ocean game that was reviewed an 8 out of 10 or above overall metacritic was star ocean on the playstation 2 the third game so the fact that this game not only sold more starting out in japan but also reviewed considerably better that's a positive movement and that's pulling off the impossible for star ocean because many felt that this franchise could be dead after the divine force selling your game for ten dollars and it's barely one year old that's absolutely not what you want to see that would be considered a flop combine that with square enix saying hey all of their games they released their double a games and all that released last year didn't really do that well star ocean included in that along with dio field and other games harvestella all that stuff that came out last year like square enix just dump trucked a bunch of games 
this is absolutely a positive sign for Square Enix. Once again, it's a remake. It's a game that you don't expect to sell better than the brand new game on new platforms like the PlayStation 5, but it actually went out there and did really well. So I think that the future for Star Ocean is clear at this point. They should make another game. They should improve the engine, improve what they're doing with Star Ocean, the second story R, make that even better. Even clean up the sprites maybe a bit more. You don't have to make it as like PS1, right? Trying to get like that pixel from PS1. Make it kind of advance it, right? Advance it from there and then make those backgrounds like you had and go that way. Because Star Ocean, the second story R is better. It's just flat out better than every other Star Ocean game that I've ever played. Now, my previous favorites were Star Ocean 3 and Star Ocean 4. And now after a number of hours into Star Ocean at the second story R, I can definitively say that Star Ocean the second story R is the best Star Ocean game and I don't think it's close. It does some incredible things with the remake. They touched up all of the rough points with the original game on the PS1. The game on the PS1 is not bad, but this one had so many cool quality of life features. Obviously the graphics are great, the sound is great, all the different things that they've put into this game to improve it. It wasn't just a a up and dryer all right here we go improve the graphics same game and that's all you do there was a lot more added into it so i love that about it and they can take this style and make another game and i think it would review just as good and potentially even sell better because now fans are like okay this is a quality franchise yet again now listen guys Metacritic and all that type of stuff in terms of reviews is not the be all end all. You can love Star Ocean 3, Star Ocean 4, Star Ocean 5, Star Ocean 6. You can love any game. If you like it, that's fine. But when it comes to these publishers, when it comes to people buying games, they're not just going to blindly buy something because they think it looks interesting. They have to see that other people are somewhat enjoying it or that the game is doing okay or there isn't fatal flaws, right? Like if you look at games, you definitely want to know that, okay, I'm buying a quality product because not everybody has the money to just go out there and say, okay, I think this looks good. I don't know how it reviews or I don't know how it is, but I'm just going to buy it anyway. Not everybody has that, right? Not everybody can do that like content creators or like people with disposable income, right? So I think that when you have a game that positively reviews well, like Star Ocean, the second story R, that gives you momentum. That gives them confidence. That gives them the ability to say, okay, it's worth the money because we have a quality product here we just have to market it we just have to get the word out get the game to youtubers whatever the case is because we have a great product here and people are loving it the fans are loving it the reviewers are loving it so that's why it's important to make sure that you put out that type of game to where it can review well and do quality so it can inspire more people to give it a shot or check it out that don't want to spend their money on something that they maybe won't like now once again it's not the be all end all if you think something looks lit you think something looks incredible who cares what other people are saying go out there and play it for yourself and figure it out however there has to be a balance between the two and that's why i'm so happy that star ocean the second story r has done as well as it's done when it comes to reviews now let's talk about the game itself so i've been playing it on the nintendo switch and the playstation 5 if you watch my streams you've seen me probably stream it a couple times on the playstation 5 phenomenal combat phenomenal gameplay phenomenal performance everything is awesome i also have it on the nintendo switch and i've been playing it portable because portable star ocean is really good i did that with the first departure r and now i'm doing that here and it's awesome now there are some differences obviously you have the 30 frames the graphics aren't quite as crisp although i will say playing it on an oled when it comes to nintendo switch is really good i can kind of forgive the 30 frames a bit because the oled is just awesome to play it on so it looks really good on there and it is like a pixel art game with 3d background so a smaller screen works really well for this type of game that isn't pushing the best 3d graphics or anything like that so i will say that the nintendo switch version is pretty good for that i'm playing through rena's campaign on there and then i'm playing through claude's campaign on the playstation 5 so a lot of my time has been split between them and the game is phenomenal my impressions are go out there and buy it the game is really good i love the dodging to do like the different type of attacks and you can kind of see that i love what they've done with with the combat system and the different upgrades that you have the battle points and just how fast and fluid everything is it's really simple to get into a battle start slashing it up but then also have a lot of depth as well and the game for some people i've noticed this when it comes to other people talking about the game is that they say man it's really kind of easy until some bosses or some parts but that's why i always say 
I'm playing the game on the hard difficulty because Star Ocean has always been an easy franchise for the most part. You've never really had to grind too much on the standard difficulty and there's ways to just completely break or bust the game based off of upgrading, especially with Star Ocean 3 and Star Ocean 4 with their multipliers and experience multipliers and points and crafting and all that. And I'm pretty sure you can do that in Star Ocean, the second story R from what I remember, but I like the fact that they do have those multiple difficulty levels. I like the fact that they have all the indications when it comes to quality of life features the new relationship system there's all sorts of things that they've kind of added in to spice things up and to make it far better than many of the new rpgs that come out i haven't had this much fun with the star ocean game in a decade right it's been a long time since i've played a star ocean game and i've felt okay this is high quality it might be okay or somewhat good at times but this feels high quality and that's why it's got that nice 85 86 rating or wherever it's kind of hovering around at it's hard for a lot of japanese double a rpgs or old school games to kind of come back and get that or even new rpgs to get that rating so to see star ocean do this well is something that's positive they are pulling off something here that i think that can really benefit them in the future i think that the game is incredible i think that no matter what you decide to go with whether it's playstation 5 for that extra performance and those extra graphics or the nintendo switch for the comfort and the easy use of having it portable because this game is addicting i think that you really can't go wrong with either one and i'm enjoying my time with both of them but yeah streaming it's cool to have like my playstation 5 version so i can have it in 60 and then when i'm just lying down relaxing maybe watching some youtube videos having that on in the background whatever the case is i can play on my nintendo switch and i can go through both campaigns because there is replay value you have the two campaigns to go through there's different decisions and different things that you can do so i'm kind of mixing it up on the playthroughs in terms of what i focus on which is pretty cool it takes double the time but at the same time this is not a game that i'm dying to oh my god i gotta beat the game right away because i've already played it from back in the day right so i'm just kind of playing casually at my leisure and enjoying it quite a bit a bit tropey at times when it comes to certain jrpg stuff but it is old it's from the ps1 era and it's almost charming when it comes to that not a perfect game by any means there's some things here and there when it comes to the combat that i felt could have been a bit smoother or better but overall i feel that it's really really good now there is a demo for those who haven't quite picked it up yet because i know a lot of you guys are waiting and seeing what's going on with this game maybe getting a discount or something like that there's a demo so go there download the demo it's on playstation it's on the nintendo switch download it and when you're done it transfers over to the full game so if you decide to pick it up maybe there's a black friday sale or deal or maybe early next year you start seeing some discounts down to 29 39.99 and you want to pick it up go ahead and start it off right now then transfer over that demo save data to the full game so i think that they really thought this one through and i feel for the first time in a decade star ocean truly has a future like the last three star ocean games i've just been like oh i'm not so sure about this this might be the last one. Oh, not so sure about this this game isn't reviewing well oh goodness gracious look at these sales like that's how it's been every single time like when you have a big new rpg you're getting absolutely cooked by every other rpg that's not even as big in comparison to other rpgs so games like atelier riza or some of these other double a rpgs that are just cooking it when it comes to the sales numbers right koei tech was saying hey we've sold millions of copies of atelier riza overall and star ocean for is like we're not telling you anything that's definitely not a good sign and i know that they've made money over the years i know star ocean 4 and star ocean 5 to a degree and i know star ocean the first departure r did well so it's not like they're completely broke with this franchise or anything but you can tell that it just hasn't been up to snuff when it comes to what the larger audience of jrpg fans want and if you look at it everybody knows about star ocean in the jrpg community like people know about it they just choose not to buy it because of some of the stuff that i've mentioned but now we finally have something that i can confidently say go buy it since i've been doing this channel i have not recommended a single star ocean game new game that's came out but now it's finally like okay we've got something here so i'm confident in it i think that people the gamers the fans are confident in star ocean the second story R, and they can truly build something for the future but we'll see what square enix decides to do we'll see if tri ace is on the case we just don't know you know after gem drops put up this gem I think Square Enix just says, hey, you know what? This will cost us less than making a full big 3D game that's trying to be Final Fantasy or trying to be whatever it wants to be and isn't. And we can make this instead where we can actually have less but do more and get better scores and potentially 
better sales like we saw starting out here in Japan. And I would not be surprised if worldwide when it comes to the physical sales, especially with Switch and PlayStation 5 and PS4, that this game is actually beating out the previous two Star Ocean games very handily and easily beating out Star Ocean The First Departure R. So what do you guys think about this overall when it comes to my thoughts on Star Ocean The Second Story R and the future of the franchise, the impossible task this franchise is with? Are you optimistic like I am or do you feel that it's not quite enough? Let me know in the comment section below. All right, guys, that wraps it up for this video here. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Please make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe if you're someone new. Click that notification bell and check out my other Nintendo Switch and RPG videos right here on screen. Thank you for watching. We'll catch you guys for the next one. Peace.